Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to have everybody here today. Uh, let's get to it. We're going to get into the Word today. Uh, let's have a word, word of prayer and we'll get on this subject. Continue teaching on uh, uh, how to get out of debt, believing the Word of the Lord for uh, 2024. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the anointing that removes every burden and destroys every yoke. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost to teach, to teach us all things, Lord. Jesus, you said in your word, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're hearing from heaven today. We're putting the word of God in first place and final authority in our life, Lord. Uh, I'm believing God for many 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 people this year to get out of debt many many people this year to be debt free lord uh miracle debt cancellations uh supernatural increase uh just a, a multitude of ways that you're going to bless your people financially to be debt free in jesus name amen all right today I want to teach on miracle debt cancellation. Is miracle debt cancellation biblical? Can it happen to me? Uh, what are the what are the factors that I need to consider to re, to to receive a miracle debt cancellation? Well, first let me share this with you. Uh, I have I have received one. Uh, and uh, it was in it was a a ten thousand dollar tax debt that was miraculously canceled. I was doing everything I could to pay that thing off. Uh, when you owe the IRS, uh, they, they want their money. <laughs> uh, that's all I can say. And the pressure was great. And uh, to make a long story short, I'm not going to go into the whole thing thing today. But miracle debt cancellation is God's uh, will in our life. See, when G here's something I want to let you know that that uh, let's go to Isaiah ten twenty seven. I want to lay this out for you because the Bible said faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It says here very plainly. Uh, don't forget to factor the anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now what is a burden? Well, it's a heavy load carried with great difficulty to be weighed down. What is the yoke? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an instrument of oppression, slavery, and servitude. That all, that, now, does that all sound like what happened to what God said in His Word in Proverbs 22, 6? The borrower is subject to the lender, or he's in slavery, or is in servitude. When you borrow money, you are in a replacement covenant. You're looking to the world to meet your needs, and you're not looking to God to meet your needs, who says in His Word, uh, Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all of my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, this is not the will of God in your life. You should not be in financial uh, difficulty all the time. You should have... You should have seasons where you are being blessed. You should have seasons where you are receiving from God. And the Bible said, Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. I talked about the other day about a man who considers his circumstances in the book of Ecclesiastes will not sow. Sowing is, is, is the requirement, tithing and sowing are the biblical requirement and responsibilities of a believer 
if you are going to receive uh, debt cancellation. But a miracle, let me share the, the, the purpose of a miracle. The purpose of a miracle is to wipe out old seed. That new seed may spring up and grow. And that is the purpose of a miracle. So, you know, when you get into a purpose, when you, when you understand the, the purpose of a miracle, <clears throat> then you can get in position to receive it. Now, here's the three things the anointing will do. Number one, the anointing will make a way where there is no way. Number two, the anointing will accelerate the increase of your storehouses. For example, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increases, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall be poured out with new wine. Malachi 3, 9, 10 through 12 says, uh, Prove me now, saith the Lord of heaven, will I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that shall not be room enough to receive it? I will open the doors of heaven, your storehouses. And number three, the anointing will wipe out all debt. Now, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, he received the anointing. Now he was he was the son, he was the son of he was the son of man. He was born of God in Bethlehem. He, the Bible said he uh, he became flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But he did not do he did not enter in <coughs> to his ministry under the Levitical priesthood a man had to be 30 years old before he could enter into the, the ministry and that's when Jesus was anointed and he got up in, 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 in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19 and he was reading from the 61st chapter or the scroll from the 61st chapter in the synagogue where he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now what was the year of the Lord? Well, that was the year of Jubilee. That was the year when all debts were canceled and released. Now the Amplified says, The day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. He said in verse 21, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears right now. In other words, the anointing, Jesus said, is for debt cancellation. He said, I, Now what does that word anoint mean? Well, it means to, it means to be poured out smeared over, smeared on, and rubbed into our financial lives. It is the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. The power of God will remove the burden of lack and the yoke of debt. That's why you need to... Don't forget the fact of this anointing from God. Uh, it is God's superabundance added to our natural situation. I'll say again. It's God's superabundance added to our natural situation. Uh, let's look at some scriptures. Three supernatural ways God removed debt. Uh, number one, He provided finances. In Matthew 17, verse 24 through 27, the taxes were paid for money out of a fish's mouth. Uh, number two, in Second Kings, or, or, or another, another, well not number two, but another way financial provided was, in Second Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7 in the New Life Testament, 
Uh, this woman was in debt. She couldn't pay her debts. The prophet of God told her to go get all these oil, olive oils. That was Elisha. And the New Life Testament says the olive oil paid her debts and you and your sons can live on what is left over. Isn't that interesting? Not only did God use the anointing to pay off this woman's debt, but was the increase of that where there was more people could have their debts paid. God bless you, Tabitha. It's good to see you today, tonight. It's daytime here in the Philippines. This is my niece, Tabitha. Uh, number two, another, re another way, uh, when Peter was fishing all night, he couldn't catch anything. Jesus appeared to him in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Simon Peter's fishing business avoided bankruptcy after Jesus told him where to drop the nets. So you see, we see in the scriptures here, where supernatural ways God removed debt. Now another way he, he'll remove a debt, and he'll remove, he'll move upon someone, he'll, he'll move on someone on others. Uh, Philemon verses 18 through 19 says in the Amplified, if he has done you any wrong in any ways or owes anything to you, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write it with my own hand. I promise to pay it in full. In other words, Paul was telling this this person that uh, that had debt that he owed this man. He said, "Whatever he owes, you charge it to me. I'm going to pay it off." So that tells you right there that Paul wasn't poor. You can't be a poor man if you're paying a man's all his debt off. That's, that's I understand. So get rid of this poverty teaching. Uh. -uh. 3 John verse 2 tells us, I pray above all things that thou prosper and be in health even as thy soul shall prosper. Prosperity is God's will for a believer. Psalm 35, 27 says, uh, Let them shout and say continually that the Lord takes pleasure. Listen, prizes above gets great joy in the prosperity of his servant. Now, if he, now that was a servant. But you and I that are born again, we are sons and daughters of God. So if God's going to prosper his servants, how much more does he want to prosper his own sons? Amen. Now, Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through 37 says this. He took out two pence and gave them to the host and said, Take care of him. And whatsoever else thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. So once again, this another man, God moved on to take care of a man when he didn't have the, the finances. Uh, so, I've had God move on others to bless me. Uh, let God move on others. See, here's something that, that I've learned to practice. Faith puts pressure, puts no pressure on people. I want to say it again. Faith puts no pressure on people. That's why I don't spend a lot of time uh, pressuring people about the needs of this ministry uh, because I'm a tither. I'm a sower. Now, it's biblical and scriptural that you sow into a ministry because Paul said that you're a partaker of their grace and if you sow into their... Now, you're not sowing into a person. You're sowing into the anointing that God has given that person to meet your need, to set you free. He does that through the teaching of the Word. The Bible said, He that labor in the Word receives double honor. Talking about, you know, honor that ministry, honor that anointing with, with, the, with your income, with your tithing as the Lord leads you. Uh... So faith puts no pressure on people. Faith actually puts pressure on the covenant. It puts a demand on the covenant. You're not trying to make God do something. You're just in agreement for what He's already said. So, faith says, God 
is my source. Uh, faith says, I have seed. I have sown seed. I have planted a seed. Uh, I had the Lord tell me, He said, when you were growing up as a little boy and you were living on your grandmother's farm, you asked her a question. And in that question I asked her, I said, she put up these little wooden stakes and then she'd have these seed packets where she bought the seed. And she would uh, put that seed packet on that, sta on that stake and I would say, Grandma, what are you doing here? And she said, I want to know where my harvest is. And w when I got born again, and I began to read Mark chapter 4, so is the kingdom of God if a man would plant seed, and it should spring up and grow if he knoweth not how. First the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn in the ear, then the harvest has come. I heard the Lord say, Start naming your seed. And I began to do that, and, I, and the first time that I received a debt-free car was uh, in 1984. Of, I was at the time on a Greyhound bus and in the ministry, and I had real need for a car. I was preaching in this church in uh, Southern California, and for two, two or three weeks, uh, the offerings came up to about $300, and... Uh, I was going to this full gospel businessmen fellowship meeting on a Saturday morning with some other people that I went to preach in that church. There was a man there, a special speaker, who had a ministry to go to Africa. The Lord spoke to me and said, uh, I want you to send this man to Africa. And I said, okay, Lord, I'll give him an offering. And God said, no, I didn't tell you to give him an offering. I told you to send him to Africa. And I said, well, Lord, what do you want me to do? I said, I got $300 here for that I've made, in, you know, that I've gotten these offerings through this preaching the last two or three weeks. He said, put that in the offering. I said, Lord, that's all I got. And he said, what is your greatest need right now, Roger? I said, well, I've been praying and I need a car for ministry. He said, okay, I want you to put that $300 in as a seed, and I want you to name it Car Seed. I said, Lord, what? He said, name it Car Seed. Just trust me. So I did. So uh, after I got done preaching there, then when I got back to, to, to San Jose, California, the Lord, I was in a Wednesday night in my church there. I was Wednesday night there in the service. Somebody in the church in the service came up and said, "Brother Roger, I need to talk to you. Can you wait after church?" I said, "Sure." So I went after church, and they came up to me and said, "You know, Saturday morning. Now listen to how the Lord moved. Saturday morning, me and my wife were going to buy another car, and I purposely was going to buy it for my wife." Uh, she didn't really need a new car, another, a, 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 a car, but the Lord really spoke to me and my wife and said, You know what? Brother Roger needs a car for his ministry. Uh, I want you to buy him a car. And they had the money saved, they had the money put away, and, uh, and, uh, so they, they told me that, to make a long story short, they bought me, uh, this was in 1984, and uh, they bought me a used 1981 Toyota Corolla. Oh man, that car. So, God used my $300 C to get me my first debt-free car. And I'll tell you, my faith just exploded after that. You couldn't convince me that planting seed didn't work. I never heard another preacher preach it. I heard the Lord just say that to me in that meeting. And that's where faith has to come through the obedience. And the scripture said, God will not forsake a cheerful giver. Amen. So, God moved on another person, or a husband and wife, to bless me with that car. So, <clears throat> faith says God is my source. 
We never put a push on money. We put a push on our faith. Now, here's the other one I told you about, about when I owed a, a, a tax. Uh, uh, the IRS, I owed $10,000 tax debt. I got seriously behind. I was, I was uh, in my own business and... and uh, I got. I, I had to get my accountant, and we found out that I, that boy, I owed a lot of back back money. And at the time, uh, I didn't know how I was going to pay it off. Uh, I kept praying and praying and praying. I said, "Lord, I, I can't seem to to get this thing paid off." And as I was praying, the Lord gave me Mark eleven twenty three. Where Jesus said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. I heard the Lord tell me, Tell, speak to that debt to be removed. And he gave me Mark 11.23. So I took out that $10,000 tax bill I had, laid my hands on it, I said, in the name of Jesus, as a commandment of Jesus, who is the head of the church, according to Mark eleven twenty three, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. As God is my eternal witness, I laid hands on that tax bill. I commanded that bill to be paid in Jesus' name. Well, when tax season got around again, uh, I had my accountant do it, uh, and uh, my tax accountant, and she said, uh, "Roger, you're going to get a you're going to get a refund." And I said, "I can't. I don't. How can I get a refund? I, 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 I'm ten thousand dollars behind and uh, oh debt." She said, well, let's just go ahead and send it in anyways. So when she sent it in, I, I did get a check in the mail for, like, I think, around close to $800 or so. And so I said, Lord, I got, I got a check here for $800. He said, didn't you speak to that debt? I said, yeah. Well, didn't you believe when you spoke to it? I said, yes, sir. So I called the IRS, asked them about my, my tax status. And they said, well, let's check our computers. They looked at the computers and said, well, everything's fine. We don't see any problems. Uh, and she, the lady on the phone said to me, did you receive your, uh, did you receive your, uh, credit? Did you receive your money? And I said, yes, ma'am, I did. So you see, God can remove the debt. Oh, that's so, that, that, that doesn't seem impossible. Wait a minute. I can show you scripture in the Bible where God removed debt supernaturally. Matthew eighteen twenty seven. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. There was a man that, that you read Matthew eighteen twenty seven, a man that, that owed this man a lot. Two of these men owed this owed, owed men money, and, and they forgave them. They forgive them of that debt. Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, verses 1 through 13, Nehemiah canceled the debt of all the poor Jews. How about that? Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Here's the scripture you should use for miracle debt cancellation. And I use the Amplified. Jesus canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note with its legal decrees and demands. See, that's what, when you sign for a note and promise to pay, there are uh, the stipulations that you have to do to, stay, to, to follow the agreement, like the monthly payment, interest, whatever day of the month it is, and you're servant to that. And that's where we need, in closing the day, I said that at the beginning of this teaching, you need to consider the anointing. Factor the anointing. The anointing factor got me a debt-free car when I planted a $300 seed. The anointing factor, when I acted on what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty-three, 
canceled out a $10,000 tax debt. Now, that is supernatural. You can go to a uh, uh, those debt those debt uh, companies, and they can you know. And I'm not against that, uh, and uh, and and surely they can help you uh, reduce that debt. Uh, and uh, but don't just try to do this in the natural. That's what happened to Peter. Peter fished all night, didn't catch anything. Consider Peter for a minute. Peter was a professional fisherman. He knew every fish in the Sea of Galilee. He knew every fish that was there. This is how he made his living. This is how he fed his family. This is how he took care of, paid his bills. So when Jesus came to him, who was a carpenter, by the way, wasn't a fisherman, said to Peter, put your nets on the other side. Peter began to say, well, I don't know if this really, in his mind, he's, he's not really obeying. He said, I don't really know if it's going to work. But, you know, I mean, this guy here, he comes up to me, he's a, uh, he's a carpenter, I don't really know him that well. He's coming up to me and he's telling me how to fish. <laughs> and Peter, I, I'll just go ahead and say this, really just did this to shut Jesus up. He didn't believe for a harvest because he got the worst net he could find. Jesus didn't say get a net. He said get nets. And I tell you, I've heard people say, well, that was a miracle break netting no, harvest. No, it was never supposed to have one net and the net wasn't supposed to break. How are you going to keep fish if nets break? No. But if he would have did what Jesus said, he would have said, hey, he would have said, all his fishermen buddies, I need a net. Can I use your net? Jesus said, I'm going to have the greatest harvest. Hey, I want your net. I want your net. I want your net. So you see, he was not really working with God. He was trying to work with God, but he was actually working against God. So when he did see that harvest, what did Peter do? He repented. <laughs> those, I can see those fish uh, slapping, jumping up in that boat. I can see them slapping up there on top of Peter, and Peter just... Uh, uh, just fly on his knees, fish flying everywhere. <laughs> and what did Jesus say to him? Peter, you're no longer going to be a fisherman for this, uh, for, in a business. Now you're going to fish for me. He said he, Jesus used fish to get Peter out of his debt to get him into the ministry. Amen. You might be going into the, you know, people. Now, I remember when I was called into full time ministry, and I had debt. And I, I, I thought, God, how in the world I'm going to get out of debt and start a full time ministry with $5 in my pocket and one place to preach? But see, there you go again. You're trying to do it in the natural. I was trying to do it in the natural. I was telling God, well, God, you know, I'll work part-time and then preach when I get opportunities. And and it didn't work that way. And the Lord said, no, I didn't tell you to work part-time. I told you to quit your job, go into the ministry. Now listen to what I said. You don't quit your job and go into ministry. I didn't say that. I said, God told me to quit my job and go in the ministry. You have to hear from the Lord. You, di you just can't follow what I'm saying on my testimony. You have to follow with the Lord. Are you listening to me? You have to follow in the Lord. Amen. You have to follow in what God says. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I don't know. I can't seem to add people on here in the camera. Just just watch what I've got. But you've got to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. That's why 
Uh, if you're going to be successful and get God's favor and uh, the anointing to do this supernaturally, you are going to have to spend time in prayer. You're going to have to spend time in the Word of God. Amen. Now, I had somebody really uh, kind of get in an argument with me one time about prosperity. And I said, and the Lord said, you know what, Roger, just go ahead. Uh, let them run their mouth because they don't have a clue what they're saying. So I literally found, and I'm going to teach on it all this. I have enough teaching for all of 2024 in the Bible. I found 21 way God supplies. Are you listening? All in the Bible and 191 scriptures. Oh yeah. So I mean, I'm going to load you up with so much teaching. I'm going to load you up with so much uh, scripture. You're going to have to either do two, one or do two things. Either accept it or reject it. But that's your choice. Amen. Now, I want you to share this with other people. Go back and watch this video uh, so it will uh, build your faith. Uh, these testimonies I shared in my own personal life, I, I trust they're going to cause you to, to help you to get in the Word, uh, help you to know. That, look, God's no respecter of person. If He can do it for me, He can do it for you. Amen. I mean, if God, I learned this in, in the healing realm when I had cancer, and the, and the, and the doctor said I wasn't going to live very long, and, and, and the urologist told me my bladder was completely shot, no medicine, no surgery would ever change it. I learned these principles of faith, connecting up to the source, connecting up to the anointing, how to stand on the Word, how to put the Word in my heart, speak it out of my mouth, how to, how to believe I receive it. And, and that's the key. The key is Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Number one, don't let the word of miracle debt cancellation depart out of your mouth. Don't be saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how we're going to get through. Gas is too, gas is so much. I don't know how we're ever going to pay this house off. I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, quit saying I don't and start saying thank God God's making a way. Thank God the favor of God is on my life. Thank God God is, is, is sees me debt free. You know, when I learn something that's very important, when I learn to make the decision I'm not going to borrow money the rest of my life, and I'm going to tell you something. It wasn't easy. I, 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 I got myself back into borrowing money because I yielded to the pressure. And I got myself hurt. But I repented and thanked God for the blood, thanked God for God's forgiveness, and I got rid of the condemnation off of me about do, borrowing money. And God began to move for me again. Amen. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that they may observe to do. There you got to be a doer of the word. You can't just be a hearer of the word, James says. You're being self-deceived. Then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Now, you might have taken years to get to get in debt. Amen. Now, God ain't going to get you out of debt so you can be lazy, spend more time on watching television and having an easy life. No. I told you the motivation for God's wealth, money, and supply is to be a blessing to others. And you can't bless people if you're broke. Amen. So, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to agree with me. Jesus said, If any two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done as my Father in heaven. I'm agreeing with you that your miracle debt cancellation, God is moving on your behalf. Your miracle debt cancellation is, God is moving ways to remove that debt. Either move on others, 
do it supernaturally, but He is moving. And you have to believe that. And start when you get in your car and your car has that monthly payment, just slap your hand on that dashboard and say, Thank God, thank God, thank you, Lord, this car's paid off in the name of Jesus. I told you a long time, a few weeks ago, if you owe things like a house, a car, or whatever, turn them into a, a, a give the ownership to God. Turn it into a seed. Amen. If you say, now Lord, I promise you, Lord, you pay off this car. I'll use it for your kingdom. And if you tell me to bless someone or bless a preacher, I will, I will quickly obey and give that car because you are the one that will supply me. Now, if God tells you to give a car, get ready. You're about to get a brand new car because God don't give junk. <laughs> I had a pastor friend of mine that has a funny story in closing. Uh, when I told him about how God blessed me one time with a, a brand new debt-free car, but he didn't know how many cars I gave before I ever got that one. And so he said, well, you know, I'm going to do the same thing Brother Roger did. <laughs> and uh, he gave his junk car and, and somebody gave him another junk car. And people were giving him junk cars. You know, I mean, cars that you had to have work on, repair. And he said, Brother Roger, I just don't understand something. I said, well, what is it? He said, I've been believing God for a new car. And he said, all I'm getting is junk. And I said, well, what are you giving? Was that car the best car you had? He said, no. He said, well, see, that's what you got. You give junk, you're going to get junk. Now, I've never given cars to get cars. I always did what I, I, I matter of fact, to be honest with you. Whatever God tells me to give, I'm going to give. I gave a van away one time and that, I, that I believe God for a, a 12 passenger van to a ministry. And to tell you the truth, uh, I've never yet uh, named that seed for a new van because I've never had a need for one. Now, if I ever have a need for another van for my life and ministry, well, I've got seed on account. Amen. I don't have to go down to a dealership. I don't have to be concerned about a credit rating. Now, I'm not against a credit rating. You should have a good credit rating. Uh, but on the other hand, praise God, that's not my source. God is my source. And I'm going to go and I'm going to keep teaching this. I'm going to keep teaching this more and more and more and more. And the first thing you need to do, uh, this, this is a longer teaching today, I didn't know I was going to get this long. First thing you need to do is sit down with your wife, if you're married, and, and sit down and write, and, and, and look at all the debts, write them all down on a piece of paper. And then lay hold on them according to Romans 13, 8, with your, uh, you and your wife laying hands on, say, I make a decision right now according to Romans 13, 8, Oh no man anything but to love one another. Now if you've got a checking account, oh, I want to say this. <clears throat> write out, now listen to what I'm going to say, please. Write out the checks for every one of those creditors you owe. Now I didn't say send it to him. Because there's no such thing as a faith check. The bank don't, don't honor a faith check. That's fraud. Put them in a drawer and begin to say, Thank God, I'm looking for you, Lord, to, for the money to pay all these debts in the name of Jesus. Now, so you must continue have a mindset uh, to believe and confess that you're miracle debt, you're, you're debt free. Get that into your spirit. Get that into your heart. Amen. So keep so don't forget, factor the anointing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's been a partner to this ministry. Uh, this ministry, uh, we live what we preach. And uh, like I said before, I don't put pressure on, on people. I put pressure on, on the Word of God. I put pressure... On faith, and I live off of my tithing, and I live off of my giving. 
it is scriptural to, to bless ministries, to help us, because if you're financial help, it helps us to preach the gospel to all around the world. Uh, it does take money. It takes money to travel. It takes money to, to, to buy things for the ministry. And uh, I would ask you today that I'm believing for more financial partners. Uh, I want you to pray about it. If the Lord tells you to be a partner to this ministry, uh, uh, that, that we would greatly appreciate that. And uh, not only that, uh, I will uh, let you know that there's no such thing as a small seed in my in, in my ministry to, to in the way I treat it. I treat every financial sowing seed, sowing offering, uh, and believe God for your hundredfold return. Amen. Uh, and I get so excited when I hear the testimonies of what God's doing in your life to your giving. Amen. So we're going to continue this teaching tomorrow. You can, you can, we have easy ways that you can easily do it. Zelle, I have a Zelle account. It's the easiest. You'll see it there on my Facebook. Uh, I have, of course, you all, I have the, uh, PayPal. And, uh, we deeply would appreciate that. Uh, there's a lot of things the Lord's wanted me to do and, but he told me, he said, Roger, start believing for more financial partners. Uh, you're not, you're not asking for more financial partners, and, and and you need to start doing that. So he reminded me to start doing that today. Amen. Very rarely I take time taking up an offering when I'm teaching. I get so uh, focused on what I'm teaching, but uh, that is biblical. And uh, Paul said, "Not that I desire a gift." but that fruit would abound to your account. Praise God. This has been good today. Amen. Uh, I want you to uh, watch these. Uh, these have these uh, Monday through Friday. I'm going to continue teaching on this, uh, uh, and we're going to we're going to we're going to walk this word of God out about 2024, where the Lord said. We'll be in debt no more. God bless you today, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Amen.